Credit Union św. Stanisława i św. Kazimierza oferuje obecnie specjalne niskie oprocentowanie 2,15% na pożyczkę hipoteczną zamkniętą na rok. Sprawy pożyczkowe załatwisz w każdym oddziale naszej Credit Union. Zapraszamy. Chcesz uwolnić się od myśli? Spakuj i wyślij. Jeśli lecisz do Polski, planujesz wakacje na słonecznym południu lub wycieczkę pielgrzymkę do Ziemi Świętej, Włoch, Meksyku czy innych zakątków świata, zadzwoń do Queen Serena Travel. Tylko u nas super ceny i profesjonalna obsługa. Nasza dewiza to zadowolony klient. State Farm agent Ed Grusick handle all the moving parts to your insurance. Whether it's for auto, home, life, or financial services, Ed is there with more ways to help and more ways to save. Call or visit Ed today. Katolickie Studio Młodych zaprasza Państwa na 22. Międzynarodowy Festiwal Piosenki Religijnej Mississauga 2011. Gościem specjalnym będzie zespół Gang Marcela. Jeszcze ich nie załatwili. No. To jest jedyny gang, którego nawet Ziobro nie załatwił. Informacje oraz bilety na stronie ksmradio.com lub pod numerem telefonu 416 588 0555. Nasza Polska Credit Union oferuje obecnie mortgage, pięcioletni zamknięty, ze specjalnym oprocentowaniem 3,75%. Skorzystaj z okazji. Telefon 1 558 5506. Chcielibyśmy jeszcze raz powrócić do obchodów stulecia parafii św. Stanisława Kostki w Toronto. Przedstawimy Państwu bogato udokumentowany fotografiami materiał prezentujący historię najstarszej polskiej parafii w Toronto. Przygotowany przez członków parafii fotofelieton przy pomocy Andrzeja Paradowskiego zrealizował Leo Samulewski, a komentarz autorstwa prezes Rady Parafialnej Marii Samulewskiej czyta córka państwa Samulewskich Daniela. The history of the Polish community in Toronto begins in the early years of the 20th century. The Poles who came were often men looking to make enough money to return to Poland and better their lives. But they soon realized that earning enough to make a difference back home would be difficult, so they resigned themselves to remaining here. The 1907 City of Toronto Census shows that there were Polish families as well living here. As family life in a strange land was becoming a reality, the Polish immigrants began to feel a need to nurture their spiritual and religious lives. At first, it was periodic missions preached by visiting Polish priests from the U.S. One such person was Father Paweł Sobczak, a resurrectionist priest who organized many such missions. Yet the Poles hungered for a church of their own. They wrote letters to the Archdiocese of Toronto imploring Archbishop Angus McAvey to help them find a home. Archbishop McAvey turned the matter over to the diocesan administrator, Monsignor John Kidd, who was very sympathetic to the Polish cause and allowed the Poles to use St. John's Chapel at St. Michael's Cathedral for their worship. Here the Poles encountered Eugene O'Keefe, one of the more fascinating men of this period. Mr. O'Keefe was the owner of the O'Keefe Breweries and a very wealthy man, but he was a very religious one also and a great builder of churches in Toronto. 
Mr. O'Keefe, moved by the piety of the Polish immigrants, sought to find a way to help them find a permanent church. He found a Presbyterian church at 12 Denison that was being sold. He purchased and renovated the empty church according to Catholic standards. On September 3rd, 1911, the church was consecrated and mass was celebrated. The Catholic registered estimated the Polish worshippers numbered over a thousand. The homily was delivered in Polish by a visiting bishop, Józef Weber, the Bishop of Lwów. Father Józef Hinsman, a Polish priest from Chicago, was brought to St. Stanislaus by Archbishop Makovej to serve as the first pastor. Because St. Stanislaus was considered an ethnic parish, members had to register to belong and the American style of paying annual membership dues was implemented. Father Hinsman set out to organize a parish committee that would be responsible for collecting money and maintaining the physical needs of the parish. The committee took it upon themselves that since they were collecting the money, they would also control it, which led to lively debates between committee and pastor. The years of Father Hinsman tenure were not easy. Ontario was in a recession and unemployment was high. For new immigrants, these were especially trying times. With financial support from the city, Father Hinsman opened up a soup kitchen and with the help of the St. Stanislaus Koska Society, a mutual benefit society, saved many from hunger and eviction. Father Hinsman also built up the spiritual and religious aspects of the parish to help his parishioners maintain hope and belief that their lives could improve. Religious groups such as the Rosary Fraternity, St. Stanislaus Koska Society, the Parish Committee, the Holy Name Society, the White Eagle Brass Band, a parish choir, and religious classes for the children raised parishioner spirits. Father Hinsman left in 1919, and in 1922, Father Jan Józef Dokowski came. He had been a military chaplain during the war and came from a well-to-do family. He had strong values regarding the place of the church and the role of the priest, which came to cause some problems between himself and his parishioners. Where Father Dukovsky excelled was in the building up of the cultural and patriotic aspects of the parish. He loved literature and the theater. He set up a lending library of Polish books and built up theatrical groups and singing societies. During the 1920s, there was a performance of a play or musical numbers on most Sundays. Yet, in spite of his successes, he had his detractors. There were petitions sent to the Archbishop to change the pastor as there were complaints against him. Archbishop McGuigan finally decided to act and looked for a priest or an order which could bring peace to St. Stanislaus. He found such a one in the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, an order which had been very successful in building up Polish parishes in the West. In 1935, Archbishop McGuigan invited the Oblates to Toronto. They sent a young Stanisław Puchniak to bring order to St. Stanislaus. In his memoirs, he tells of some parishioners greeting him with joy, while many others were quite hostile. He writes that while he was waiting at the Chancery office, another priest asked him where he was going. Father Puchniak replied, St. Stanislaus. The reply was, my condolences. Undaunted, Father Stanislaw set about regaining the trust of the parishioners. With patience, he set up reorganizing the parish organizations and personally visiting his parishioners. By this time, he had Father Jan Bednarz as his assistant. From his visitations, Father Puchniak soon learned about the economic circumstances of his flock. Many women were working and earning a mere $7 a week. Childcare was an issue as often children were left with older children and the elderly. This prompted him to contact the Felician Sisters in Buffalo to ask for help. On October 12, 1937, the Felician Sisters arrived to live in a house on Richmond Street. A week later, they opened a day nursery there. As well, the sisters began to take part in parish activities to make the priest's life easier. They began working with the Rosary Society and in July started a summer school for the vacationing children. In 1938, the Felicians took up official residence at 25 Augusta and in December 1941 opened their day nursery there. Father Puchniak also noticed a great need to mobilize the youth. As with any immigrant group, the youth found themselves caught between the old world values of their parents and the realities of the new one they found themselves in. Father Puchniak believed that sports would be the best way to integrate youth into the Canadian life. He started up a baseball and hockey team for the boys, and the girls got to go bowling. Later, building on the foundations of the CYO, the Catholic Youth Organization, 
Father Zygmunt Muszelski and Paul Dubitsky formed Polish dance groups that took part in many Polish and Canadian festivals. Parish groups were also rejuvenated and reorganized by Father Puchniak and Father Bednarz, his assistant. Father Puchniak, recognizing the need of the Polish community to have financial access and assistance, entrusted Father Michael Smith to devise a way to ease these burdens.